From the heart of the Cape, this is Barnstable Today for Thursday, October 16th. Welcome aboard. I'm Mark Mumford. A longtime Hyannis car dealer pleads his case for a new repair center to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's our top story. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. Transatlantic Motors just off the airport rotary was asking the ZBA for permission last night to build an auto repair and maintenance garage dedicated mainly to the BMW side of their business. The present building and site have been used continuously for over 60 years and I don't know if you read, if you read your site, uh, your staff report, uh, there's a pretty decent exp explanation on, on a complicated uh, piece of land. Uh, simply stated, the southerly half is, is, has a use variance that was granted in 1968 for Earl Leggett, who was a sales car salesman and mechanic for many years in the town, is now deceased. And uh, the northerly part of the lot is uh, pre-existing use that wasn't a, a business B zone, which was uh, changed in 1969, but had been used before that as a matter of right and then continued to be used to this day. The present uh, building that's located on the site that we intend to tear down uh, has been continuously used uh, by Mr. Leggett and by uh, Mr. Trapp uh, to date. And Mr. Trapp is still using it for automotive sales and repair. Uh, the layout of the building, if you look at Burst Road going south, some 200 feet down, you have nothing but commercial property uh, all the way down to where Burst's Road bends. You have an auto dealership. To the uh, west of this property, you have nothing but parking all the way over to Otis Road. Uh, it is at the back of the property. There is an ugly chain link fence uh, on this, and the green area plus the uh, trees would be a decided improvement. Uh, this is uh, this is a place that a clump, I believe a clump of weeds would make it look better. Uh, this is a tough lot, and I think everything that's been presented thus far. Uh, makes this much more presentable and certainly uh, I would say that I'm in favor of it, both the uh, amendment to the variance and uh, the altern altering, altering excuse me, of the special permit. Thank you. Following a fairly lengthy line of questioning, the special permit for Transatlantic Motors was approved. Now we shift gears to focus on Centerville resident Eben Johnson, a retired community college faculty member who has volunteered to transcribe the town record. Eben, you recently made a funding request to the Community Preservation Committee uh, some time ago for historical archives transcription of the Barnstable town record. Could you tell us a little bit about what you had to do in order to get the money to make these transcriptions? Well, first of all, it's uh, Barnstable Town Record Volume 1 because there's a whole series in the Barnstable Town Record. What I did basically was present an application to the Community Preservation uh, Group asking them if they would be willing to provide the monies that are necessary to uh, make photocopies and to bind the transcriptions of volume one that I had made so that uh, this information that's in the Barnstable Town Record volume one could be made available to a much wider audience of people. Currently there is only one copy, it's what we call the archival copy and that's entrusted to the uh, office of the town clerk and is kept in a secure place. So it has very limited availability to the people, and yet it contains a great deal of history, uh, and I felt that it would be nice to get that history disseminated. And who in town uh, assisted you with this endeavor? Uh, no one. <laughs> uh, no one outside of the office of the town clerk. Linder was extremely cooperative in allowing me access to the volume so that I could transcribe it, and most of the transcription was done longhand, uh, or on a, a laptop computer and then I would take it and uh, put it in final form. And how many other editions or volumes are in the town record, do you, do you know? Uh, oh, I couldn't answer that, but I would assume it's in the order of 20 volumes. Uh, some of them are devoted exclusively to births, deaths, marriages. Other are devoted exclusively to uh, town meeting minutes and things like that. And you just touched upon my next question. What is in volume one of the town record? Well, 
Volume 1 is the oldest record that is in existence, and there are three parts in the archival volume. The first part is a record of uh, the proprietors and the town meeting members uh, from the years uh, 1639 to 1712, I believe it is. And um, who actually wrote the town record? Well, the town record is something that is compiled uh, as events take place. Uh, just as Linda today uh, sits at town uh, meetings or at council meetings and gets a record of what is being said and the votes that are being taken and who is speaking. So it was similar back in the 18th century. Um, so you've got a compilation here uh, of material. What we have today in the archival volume is not the original transcription. Uh, the original transcriptions have been lost to history because before uh, the 20th century, the only way that you could preserve records were, was through handwriting. And the inks that we use would fade, the use of the volumes for reference would cause them to deteriorate, and it would be necessary to transcribe them, oh, maybe every 75 or every 100 years. So what we have now is a volume that was a transcription done and I believe it was uh, 1743. Uh, what sort of work on your behalf went into the transcribing of the town record? On my behalf? As, as far as uh, when you were you had to go through and read it all and then um, transcribe it and you used uh, computer to uh, transcribe everything and yeah well what I tried to do was make a page by page reproduction of what was written in the archival volume mm -hmm. so that someone could uh, find out about the history of the town during the early 18th century middle 18th century uh, and before without going into the original record and by getting this record distributed throughout uh, libraries in southeastern Massachusetts, more people could become familiar with the history, uh, the early history of Barnstable. I made a table of contents to go along with it. Uh, I made a, an index, if I can find them, <laughs> uh, so that the use of these volumes would be facilitated. And what was the goal of your project? The goal of the project is simply to get this information out so that there is greater accessibility uh, by the public. Mm -hmm. uh, I became interested in doing this primarily because of some research work that I'm doing in conjunction with other publications. And in working with this, I found that there was such a rich storehouse of information here that is used by a number of people. It looks as if our weather will be improving. Tonight, still mostly cloudy with a chance of some lingering showers and lows in the upper 40s. Then tomorrow, the sunshine returns with winds out of the north at 10 to 20 and highs creeping into the upper 50s. As we close in on the weekend, the meeting schedule is beginning to thin out a bit here in Town Hall. But there's one big session on tap this evening, and that is the Town Council meeting in the hearing room at 7 o'clock. And tomorrow evening at the Cape Cod Mall, it's the second Youth at the Mall night produced by the town's youth commission. The activities kick off at the food court between 5 and 7. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here tomorrow. I'm Mark Mumford.